Good morning. Hope everyone's doing well through this um, um, tough times right now, the coronavirus. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty big deal. Um, our work is shut down for the next two weeks. So, you know, burning up some vacation time and doing some work out in the shop. Um, it's been quite a while since I've done a YouTube video. It's been super, super busy at work. And um, had to make a couple videos there. We were entered into a, a company-wide contest and um, had a lot of video work to do there. So we've just been tied up at work. But we're back here at the shop now. And I think we're going to do a bunch of the, get, try to get the Sydney laid as much as we can get done, get done. We're going to do that. Um, we have some parts for the taper attachment that haven't been cleaned. And instead of showing all, you know, the cleaning process, you all know it goes into the dunk tank sits in there for a couple days, comes back out, gets washed, goes into the sandblaster, gets sandblasted, we paint it, and we get ready for reassembly. So instead of boring y'all with all that, we're gonna go ahead and just do that, get all those parts ready, and then we're gonna lay them out, you know, pretty systematically, and um, um, get, those, get those parts ready to be put back on. And then uh, I have the tail stock that's still apart, that I took apart many episodes ago in the Sid uh, saga of the Sydney lathe. So we're gonna do that, um, get that into the dunk tank. We were really waiting on the cranes to be built so we could do that, Well, we have them built now, so I really don't have an excuse. Just need the time to do it, and I think I have the time. So this is what is, this is Wednesday, so I have another week and a half pretty much at the minimum. You know, there could always be more time. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get through it. So, what else are we doing? Oh, been watching some, uh, um, welding tips and tricks and, and you know trying to learn how to TIG weld don't it's not good it's not pretty yet but we're getting there it's a, it's a process you know you have to learn so that's what we're going to do so um, I think we'll just bring you back when we're ready to start putting that lathe back together so it might be a couple more days but I wanted to give a little short introduction or not introduction or excuse or explanation why it's been such a while so with that, you know, when we, I'll bring you back, we'll be ready to put some parts on the lathe. So we'll be back. All right. So when we last left you, I was putting up a game plan together. Well, lo and behold, it's a few days later. We have the tail, part, tail stock from the Sydney lathe in the soaking tank. Um, haven't looked at it yet. I took uh, the spindle part out and the uh, base plate out. They need to go into some um, evaporus, so that would be their next step for that stuff. The uh, tail stock, um, I pulled it up one time and then I said, shoot, we'll leave it in there another couple days. So it's been kind of chilly. Um, it's been getting up into the 60s, 70s. Had a couple 80 days, and, but um, this morning I woke up and it's 29, so it's been chilly. So the um, Purple Power, how long has it been in there now? Maybe two years? No. Has it been that long? God, maybe a year. But either way, um, it might not be as potent as it once was. It still works really good, but... Anyway, we're going to pull it up and move it over into the wash tank. But um, I thought I'd, you know, get those things knocked out and then show you. In the meantime, what I've been doing is I did get the, uh, the, the this holds the gib um, from the apron. I don't see the gib anywhere. <laughs> anyway, it looks good. So I took this part out, um, cleaned it. It took all the paint off, run it through the sandblast one time. I'll take it back apart. Um, Soak it one more time and then um, get it put back together and painted. Painted and put back together. That's what I'm going to do. Geez, alert, losing my words. But um, in the meantime, um, I tore a hole in my gloves or it finally eat a hole through it. So I ordered one from another set of gloves from Tacoma Company. And I'm a big guy. I mean, I have big hands. I think I wear a size 19 ring. It's a big, you know, big fingers. So um, I ordered these gloves and they fit really good. They're, they seem a little stiffer than the ones that came with the Harbor Freight cabinet, but it should be all right. Um, I think they'll loosen up when the, at the more you use them, but they fit my hands much, much better. So we're going to put those on. Um, send a nice, oh, send a copy of the Constitution. We all need to read this. Um, and what else have I been doing? Oh, been doing practicing some more TIG welding. I've moved up from the plate, plate to um, working on some tubing, and I made a snake. So I just, you know, just took some eighth wall, two inch tubing that I had in the back, cut it up into a bunch of little pieces with a 22 and a half degree cut on it and welded it all up. And 
you know, they might not be pretty, but it's not falling apart. And so I need to work on the pretty part. Um, getting much better though. Uh, what I really need is a one-on-one -on -one lesson. And as soon as this um, quarantine is lifted, you know, I'll, I'll get my brother over here and, um, and he can show me what I'm doing wrong. Um, I've been texting him pictures and he'd say, you know, speed up, dab faster, more heat, less heat, um, control your foot. Um, <laughs> Just all the things I don't know what exactly I need to be doing. So, but um, I've watched enough videos and and um, they're getting much, much, much better. I, I have to say it, and I really, really like it. But the, a couple things that I've learned: um, my table is, you know, it's got a, it's five by ten with an eight inch thick um, steel top on it. It's not thick enough. Um, you weld on it, and it gets, you know, it gets heat put in it, and it gets warpy. So I asked him you know, about building another table. And um, I think for now, we're just gonna build a smaller welding table. And I might buy one of those CertiFlat um, welding tables that has the fixture holes already in it. Um, not, not, nothing big, two foot by four foot, just see how we like it. Um, this table is also too high. I have stools and chairs and stuff like that. And one thing I've learned, you know, with MIG welding, you just get in there and get it done. But with TIG welding, it's more an artist kind of thing. So you have to be, you know, pretty daggone comfortable. So me personally, I really wouldn't mind it being at a desk height. So um, I've talked to him, you know, through text about maybe making an adjustable one so we could, um, where he likes it and where I like it, or, or if nothing else, we'll build two of them where he likes it and where I like it. Um, I like using my office chair. So I have a, you know, the old office chairs from the, the house that are just, you know, they start falling apart or they'll, they'll start sinking down. Well, I'll bring them out here and I'll just put a stiffener on that uh, hydraulic tube and leave it where it's at. But they're comfortable. So, and they have armrests on them. You can rest your arms and stuff like that. I found all this stuff, you know, you, you about need it. So I've, I'm thinking about getting one of those sort of flats, two foot by four foot, what is a couple inches tall, and they'll build some kind of frame for it underneath it. I want to be able where you can get to it at least on three sides. Um, it may go up against the wall. Who knows? I don't know just have to figure it out but I think I am gonna buy one of those so we'll let we'll go back to work first you know um, the day job pays the bills so um, and place pays for most of these toys that I have here so you know it's pretty important to have that so I'm trying not to spend much money but I really really like those sort flat ones um, from what I've seen the only thing I don't like about it it's only got a 3 16th top on it you know probably maybe can order it with you know um, with a thicker top and um, hell we might even draw one up in CAD and my brother I think he has access to a CNC plasma so if we like that tab and slot kind of construction I don't see why we couldn't make one and just make a thicker top so I might do that but that's a whole nother thing oh and another thing <laughs> love these fireball squares um, if I had unlimited budget it, I would daggone sure build a table like Jason has with a cast iron because I mean these I love it Love it. It's heavy. It's flat. Um, like I, I took these to work and I run them on the CM, or I took the aluminum one that they shipped wrong, but I took it to work and I've run it on the CMM and they're dead nuts on the angles and the flatness and the parallelism, um, everything. The planes were, you know, surface profile was right. So um, if you ever want to see how good your part is, you know, take it to a shop that has a CMM and let them run it. You'll, you'll find out. Um, so let's let's go. I'm gonna remove. I'm gonna take the camera over to the dunk tank. We're gonna take the tailstock out of it and have a look at it. Hopefully, it's just got the very first coat of paint on it, or no paint would even be even better. But either way, it's coming out of the dunk tank. So let's go over there and take a look at that. All right. So we're over here at the wash tank. Get some gloves on. That purple power, man. It if it eats the grass off. Oh, it eats the grass off. Eats the grease off of uh, metal. It, it'll eat the grease off or the oils out of your hands too. So this is about the best I can get on this shot. Um, my shelves are coming in handy to kind of clean this tray up. Let me turn that scanner down. Um, so our our plan's still going to put a top on this. Um, um, I don't know exactly what I want yet though. Maybe just those holes too would be all right. Um, like that, like the like sort of flat welding table, you know, just the top like that on here. Um, I just want the water to, or the liquid to drain out so we can get it put into the grease pit that's outside. So either way, um, here's the tailstock or 
the spindle that came out of the tailstock. It looks good, and it's even got numbers on it. Didn't see them before. So uh, we'll get this cleaned up the rest of the way. Um, it's heavy, that's for sure. And then the base plate. And I think the base plate was just one that was made. I'm, matter of fact, I'm sure it is. It's just made out of plate. But um, we're going to put it. It's got some pitted rust on it, so we'll get this into the evaporust along with um, the, uh, the spindle here. But the main thing is we have the two pieces that are, in, that are still in the purple power, the big cast iron pieces. So let me get those out right quick. So get the crane swung over here because these things, this one's not that heavy, but either way. Oh yeah. So it took it down to the primer. So that, that usually what I found in the past, that red comes off pretty pretty quick. And you can see the paint on the back there's all bubbled up. So let me spend a couple minutes and let me clean this up right quick and then I'll bring you back. A little greasy. I need to go in there and steal my go steal my wife's bottle brush. <laughs> Might be what that needs, or I might just stick it in there and let it uh, let it uh, soak on its end. But see what it, that old, old paint, man, it just comes right off. There's an oil oil um, cup right here on the top that I didn't see before. It looks good. All right, let me clean this up, and then um, uh, I think we'll move over to the bench and start getting ready to reassemble. So I'll bring you back after we paint it. You got the gist of it. I bragged on enough of my uh, the parts washer, the crane and all that stuff. So we'll get, we'll bring you back when we're ready to assemble some stuff. So we'll be back probably a couple days. Welcome back out to the shop. We're finally ready to start assembling this tailstock on the Sydney lathe. It did its time in the parts washer and did its time in the uh, um, evaporust. Evaporust did a great job. Um, but we're ready to put this thing back together. Ran across a couple issues. I lost the woodruff key that holds the handle on. So um, I either have to scrounge one up here or, or we'll order one. Either way, we might have one. And also, I found a bent stud that holds the crank down handle on it. Kind of hard to tell it, but it's just a 5 8 by 11 stud that holds the, that um, this handle goes on. And, it, it, and it's bent pretty good. So you know, ordered another one from a master car. It's not here yet, though, so probably be here Monday, which today is Sunday, the week of, what is this? Well, I'm sorry, it's Saturday. So what, the 17th or 18th or 16th? 18th. Today's the 18th. Been off of work for three weeks, so it's, you know, it's kind of got my days messed up. Anyway, we're getting ready to put this back together. Um, I got my gantry crane swung over here because that thing weighs a little bit and I don't want to sit it on there by hand because my fingers might even get in between. So we're going to use the gantry crane. It's kind of a cool shot here. You can see the gantry crane, you know, it rolls pretty easy. Um, we'll use it. Matter of fact, hopefully if we get it done, which it shouldn't take long to put it together and we'll stick it on the lathe and see how it looks. I'm ready to get some stuff on there. Um, and from there, it's, the tape attachment is all cleaned up, ready to go. Um, uh, it's ready to be put back, back together, I believe. Um, I can't think of much else that needs to be cleaned. Anyway, but you know, you see the gantry crane here and the jib crane there. I mean, they're both, you can't put a price on the money it saves on your back. I mean, it is unreal how handy those things have become. So we have plans for other stuff. We have, you know, the weld tables coming. The, um, we're, I'm drawing up plans for a, uh, 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 bottle jack press or hydraulic press. So I got plans for that. I still have, you know, half of that I-beam left from where we made these two cranes. So might as well use that and um, use that for the, uh, the hydraulic press. And anyway, the table's getting cleaned off. Less and less parts every day. Um, and yeah, getting there. Anyway, let's get this back together. Let me move the camera. Be right back. All right, so let's get this thing lifted up. level.
Them chains make a heck of a noise. <laughs> not conducive to filming, let's put it that way. So I'm gonna try not to talk while I'm doing that and I'll cut the, cut the volume down in between all this and editing. Anyway, let me get it up a little higher. You know what? Might wanna put a little oil in between there. So let me put some gloves on because this might get messy. And I'm gonna use just um, standard whey oil. I don't know. Let's see if I can get this on camera. Because the original scraping you can still see in this bottom casting. Man, it looked really good. All I did uh, after it came out of the Purple Power is I um, took a fine file to it and I filed it, made sure it got the, there wasn't any high spots on it. There weren't any. Um, then I took the uh, um, Indian stone and rabbed across it, the grinding or the, the wet rock, and grabbed or went across it and uh, just cleaned it up. That's all it took. I mean, it's in good shape. So this is just standard, like I said, just standard. I'm pretty sure it's Vactra, Vactra 2 whale oil. We'll put a little film of that on there. And I need to get one more thing. So I'm gonna pause it right here. I forgot to get my anti-seize. I'm not putting any threads together without an anti-seize. So let me pause this. Let me go get that. I'll be right back. All right, now we're back. Let's see, what's the best way to film this and uh, do all that other stuff? So let's, let's put it up here like that. Well, we fit together pretty good. <laughs> kind of surprised. Um, we're going to put a little anti seize on these threads. Or in this case, it might be a lot. Make sure these get coated really good. They don't go in all the way. And, you know, like I, these are your adjustments. So I'm going to make sure the thread's got a pretty good coat in it. Everything in the lathe came apart pretty good. You know, and there wasn't any washers with these either. So there weren't any washers on it. So we'll, before, you know, we'll put washers on it. Man, it's, it turns easy, that's for sure. I don't know if washers were supposed to be on it, but we'll get some hardened washers and put on there. I don't think it's going to hurt, that's for sure. I don't believe it's going to hurt. Anyway. All right. So we'll unhook the crane and then get the spindle stuff working on. So let me unhook this right quick and I'll bring you right back. You don't, you don't want to listen to this. All right, <clears throat> now that I got that noisy thing done, we'll go ahead and get the spindle in here. Spindle cleaned up nicely. I mean, I, you know, I knew most of them had the numbers on the top of it anyway, but um, to see it on there, I was pretty enthused. <laughs> I figured somebody might have made another one or got another one or it was nasty. I mean, this thing was really nasty. So anyway, we're going to put some oil on it. Ooh. Went together nicely. And then the cam lock. It's right there. That's where that stud goes down into. So, you know, I can't put the handle on it anyway, but the stud goes in, or the cam lock goes in here. It puts pressure on the, spin, the spindle lock. That might be what you call it. Might be a better word. <clears throat> and I left all the oil and cups in it. I have new ones ordered. They're just not here. That's McMaster car also. Um, so we'll replace them all. There's one, 
two, three, four, four or five on here. It's crazy. But um, I know where they're at now, so I can take them out. Before it had, instead of just having this one coat of paint on it, it had quite a few coats of paint on it. So, let's see. There ain't much to assembling on this thing. Uh, you know what? I better put a little anti-seize on this thing. Get the bearings off of there. Didn't even think about it. So I'm going to put some anti-seize on this uh, lead screw, and then uh, we'll bring you back. Don't need to show a lot of this. There'll be a lot of screwing going on here. All right, we'll just leave it stuck out for now. And then the new bearing goes on. We'll put oil on that. Because I know there's an oil, oil and port in the, in the back of that cup there. So that's on there. And then the cup goes on like so. Maybe a light tap tap. And then the two taper pins. So, I'm sure I got the right one, right ends going out. Yep. Yep, it goes this way. And let me give me a harder hammer here. That's there, and then the only thing left is the handle. But I, like I said, I don't have the Woodruff key. You know, I might have a different one that might work just temporarily. Let me go get that right quick. Be right back. All right, so I went through my set, and I found one that's just barely taller than the opening, so maybe it's enough to get the handle on and crank it around. Oop, wrong way. Oh, look at there. It's like butter. Ah. Oh, I don't have my screw on the end of it. No wonder it's wanting to go in. <laughs> so, and here's the nut. So we'll go ahead and put the nut on here. So my handle don't fall off and make me look like a dummy more than I am. So that goes like that. And this is a, one of the, the sleeves that came out. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it back in there. Locks in good and unlocks good. So stick that back in there just to protect the taper. And then the only thing left we got to do is mount it up onto the lathe. So um, I need to do a little more cleaning up on the homemade base plate, but I think we're going to wheel this sucker over there and stick it on the lathe because it looks good. Other than this, you know, homemade handle, which I'm not too fond of, and it's kind of crooked, so it might have took a fall or something. So, all right, well, we've got it slung up, and we designed this gantry crane so it would go over this table. So this is a 5 by 10 table, so it's about 6 feet wide, and it'll go over the lathe, so you can just slide it right over the lathe. And you have enough room in the front of the back so you can put stuff like this on it or any kind of material. You could wheel the card in between the front of it, lift it up, and move it onto the lathe. Anyway, I'm going to wheel this over here, and we'll be right back. All right, that worked out well. Let's move the camera closer. So I'm going to clean off the ways. Get any grit that's on it. 
it has a coating of a WD-40 on it just to keep it from rusting. All right, let me get the whale. The humidity in the car, you know, well, the humidity everywhere, anyway. You know how it is. So we'll just wheel it on over here. And lower it down. And another project getting closer anyway to rebuilding it. We're getting this thing done. Oh, I don't have a lot of experience with other ones, but that thing moves pretty good for as heavy as it is. Yeah, I'm happy. So, let's see, what do we got left to do? You know, we got to do the handle, of course. I'm going to, um, we got to make two way wipers, so, or covers, I should say. So I'll get those done too. Those come off. Got to put in the oil and um, cups and uh, keep on moving on. This is getting closer. So, with that, I think this is a long enough, drawn out enough video over this. Um, we, our workplace opens back up on the 20th, so um, I'm sure we're all going to be wearing masks and stuff while we're in there building trucks. But anyway, um, hope you all stay safe, your family's safe, and uh, you know, we get through this all together. So until next time, see ya.